Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey everybody, it's Joel Brzezinski and Mike Kapler. This is Growing in Grace and welcome to a very special edition of Growing in Grace. We've got uh, somebody with us today, a special guest who is very near and dear to our hearts, someone who has helped us tremendously on our own Grace Walks. Steve McVeigh is with us today from Grace Walk Ministries. Uh, Welcome, Steve. It's good to have you here with us. I can't tell you how happy I am to be with you guys. I tell you, I'm, I'm so excited about what you've been doing with this program on Grace Walk Radio. Well, it's been fun for us too, Steve. You know, Joel and I both uh, came into uh, the Grace Walk, if you will, the Exchange Life and a greater understanding of it probably back in the mid-90s. And your ministry, your books have probably done more than uh, for us than what we could ever express. It, it's helped us uh, get our, our thinking right, get us on a path where we could uh, not only enjoy the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ, but to be able to, to share and, and even teach some of that same sort of thing to, to other people out there, too. And, and Grace Walk Internet Radio has given us that avenue to do that. Well, that's very encouraging to me. It's been uh, been great to see the, the growth and the progress, you know, that you guys have had, not just in your lives, but in your ministry and uh, in the scope of outreach that you're having, and especially now through the, uh, the, the program here. Uh, I'm very encouraged, so uh, thank you for that. Well, we appreciate that. You're a real... Uh a great cheerleader for the whole, uh, you know, for everybody out here, and uh, everyone uh, know appreciates all that you've done. I know we've had a few questions and a few, uh, you know, things that we might want to talk about. Cap, I know you had been talking about how, you know, the question of Steve. How did you come into your grace walk? How, you know, you had been a, a preacher. Uh, you'd been uh, saved for a long time in your life, and you know, you're in a place right now where you're you know, live in the, a free grace walk, but it wasn't always like that for you, I'm sure. And so how did you in your personal life come into the grace walk? Well, I was the poster boy for legalism, uh, Joel, I tell you. Uh, I grew up in church. My dad was a deacon. My mom was a Sunday school teacher. I'm one of those guys that you hear about who went to church before I was born. You know, my parents were already in church. And uh, so, you know, I grew up in a, in a church that believed the Bible and loved the Lord. But uh, like a lot of places, you know, I was taught that uh, we're saved by grace. And then uh, it's up to us to move forward in our own journey based on doing the, the right things. You know, daily Bible study or daily Bible reading, prayer, evangelism, giving, church attendance, all these things. And uh, so that, that, that was the paradigm that I grew up with. And so I became a, uh, I began to preach at 16, became a pastor at 19, and uh, brought that paradigm right into my pastoral ministry, uh, teaching people that uh, it's, it's the grace of God expressed through Jesus that saves us. But now, you know, we've got a responsibility. And I really focused a lot on how that if we wanted to grow spiritually, if we wanted to make spiritual progress, it was up to us to do the things it took to make that happen. Uh, I wrote in detail about my own story in my first book, Grace Walk, and uh, I would uh, encourage folks, if they haven't read that, to read it, because that is the starting place for me. And uh, to, to move forward with the story, after being a local church pastor for 17 years, uh, the Lord had brought me to Atlanta, Georgia, where I served as pastor, senior pastor in a dying church. And, that it, and when I say dying, it was dying in every measurable way. Uh, it had been happening for the five years previous uh, to my coming there, but I thought when I got to the church, things would turn around. But uh, to my shock and disappointment, it didn't. The church kept dying right out from under me. And that's the first time I'd ever seen that happen. So as, as it was dying out from under me, the Lord was working to bring me to a place of brokenness. And ultimately, that became the turning point for me. Um, Steve, was there any particular influence or Bible teachers early as you were moving into this grace walk or a a better understanding of the exchange life? Was was there anybody who had a particular influence on you? Well, you know, my personality type is one cap that when I'm interested in something, man, I dig and and find out everything I can about it. So I attended a conference at a church here in Atlanta where uh, the message was taught. One of the first people, in fact, maybe the first person I ever heard say a word about co-crucifixion and 
and uh, the new nature and all that was Mike Quarles, who now works with me, of course, as a director for our Grace Walk Recovery Ministry. Uh, many of the listeners may remember and know Mike and Julia Quarles because they co-authored a book with Neil Anderson called Freedom from Addiction. And Mike shared his testimony that day of how that having, after having been a pastor, uh, a, a local pastor, he found himself addicted to alcohol and ultimately became what he calls a falling down drunk. And he went on and shared the story of how that he tried all of these rehabilitation programs and he tried, you know, exorcism and he tried discipleship programs and everything he knew to do. And uh, he shares in his own story how that it was coming to understand his identity in Christ that, that set him free. And as, lis- as I listen to Mike, I, I, I'll never forget sitting there. There must have been about 40 or 50 of us in the room. And I sat there and I thought, dear Lord, that guy is a preacher and he's telling the kind of personal stuff that I would never tell if I were him. Mm-hmm. And I was so amazed and impressed by his transparency and vulnerability that it awakened in me a hunger to find out more. So I bought up a lot of books and there were a lot of authors and teachers that God used to speak into my life, but the tipping point for me when the light came on was when I was sitting in my office at the church one afternoon reading Bill Gillum, my dear friend Bill's book, Lifetime Guarantee, and as I was reading that book, all of a sudden the scales just fell away, and I saw it. I saw the the meaning of the, the, the reality that we've been crucified with him. I saw the the reality of the death of the old man. I saw the new nature and that now, you know, Christ is our life and we have his righteousness and his holiness. And for the first time, it just became very clear to me. And that was my Damascus Road experience, if you will. And I say Damascus Road experience, but let me make sure I I, I throw this disclaimer in for for listeners. And that is not everybody has the kind of uh, earth-shaking ground-moving emotional experience that I did. My wife Melanie is a perfect example. The light gradually got brighter and brighter for her until the revelation of, of identity and grace came to her. But for me, it was a cataclysmic moment when that light was turned on. Yeah, and no, I, I was going to ask, too, along with that, in, ever since that time in the, in the early 90s, when you began to get a knowledge of this and then your, your Damascus Road, has there also been kind of a, a gradual process of getting it into your heart, so to speak, or of um, growing from uh, just you know having the, the head knowledge of what all this is about into the, the growing, the living out in the daily life, uh, the, the walk becoming from knowledge to not just knowledge, but an actual process of, you know, Christ is living his life in and through you. Absolutely. You know, the thing that, the thing that I thought in the beginning, and some who come to understand their identity and, and the meaning of walking in grace, think, as I did, that this revelation is the grand finale. We think it's the crescendo in the beginning. It's like, you know, I can't tell you how many people have said to me, it was like I was born again, again, when I came to understand this. I get that. You guys get it. A lot of our listeners understand exactly what that means. But the truth is, it's not the finish line. It's the starting line. It's the starting point. And so, you know, the the thing that I would challenge those who are in the exchange life community to remember is that teaching people their identity and what it means to uh, be free from the law and to, to, to live, you know, walk in the grace of God every day. You know, that's that's the elementary place. That's the starting place. And so we, as long as we live in this world, we're continually to be growing and going forward. You know, the Apostle Peter said, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a continuum. There's a journey. And I find that even today, in many ways, in many ways, my perspective on various issues has have evolved from what they were back in 1990 when the Lord first began to uh, to teach me this message. Grow in grace. That sounds like a good name for a program, huh, Joel? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. A little plug there, a subliminal plug. Yeah. Well, Steve, something that I think a, a lot of our listeners and, and people in, in the grace community uh, deal with is there are a number of people out there who uh, they want to attend church they're growing in grace they're coming into a a true understanding of their identity in christ and they're a little frustrated because the only churches nearby are not necessarily um that kind of a church they they may be rather legalistic in nature 
Do you have any words of encouragement or, or advice for people out there who, who are struggling with that issue of, of growing in grace while attending legalistic churches? Well, I, certainly I feel uh, sympathy and empathy for them. Um, as, as you guys know and many of our listeners know, uh, there is a falling away from the institutional church world. I mean, all the stats show that. Uh, in fact, I recently read, I think it was this week, I read on the Internet that, uh, that uh, the United States now is number four in terms of the uh, percentage of the populace that don't attend church anywhere on a Sunday. So a lot of other countries are sending missionaries to this country. But having said that, I don't think that falling away from the institutional traditional approach to faith is indicative of a of a growing disinterest in spiritual things. To the contrary, I think there is a growing interest in, in spiritual things in our culture. And so as those of us who, who, who have some understanding of the, the, the true gospel of grace, I think that we need to seize the day and we need to be aware that there are people who are hungry and we can reach out and share this message with those folks. Now, in regard to your question, Cap, about church attendance, I can't tell you how many times people email me. I get mail every week from people who say, you know, there's no grace-based church in my area. You know, I can't find a place to go and, and sit in church where I'm not abused with legalism. Should I leave? Should I stay? And my answer is always the same, and that is, I can't answer that question for you. I think that there are two things that we need to take into consideration. On the one hand, it may be that there will be times when the Lord leads somebody who understands identity and grace to stay in a legalistic church as a grace missionary and to share the message one-on-one -on -one within the sphere of influence that they have in that traditional uh, church setting. And if the Lord leads a person to do that, certainly he'll use them. And they might start the, the movement, if you will, from the ground up by just reaching out to the people they know. The other side of that coin is there are places, and I hear from folks like this all the time who are in these, these congregations, there are places where the leadership is extremely legalistic, extremely authoritarian, Often it's autocratic leadership where a pastor or some elders or key leaders have absolute veto power and control over the membership, where the people are not allowed to think for themselves, to speak out about anything that would in any way contradict or undermine what's coming from the pulpit. And there's a, a, a governing force in that congregation that rules with a rod of iron so that there is no opportunity, really, for a person to share the message of grace in that congregation. And in that case, I would say, find the nearest exit and run, not walk, to get to it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, I think both uh, Cap and I, especially with uh, many of the people we've been meeting on Facebook and in other uh, arenas, there's a lot of people who are going through that. And then there are a lot of people who are definitely weighing what the Lord wants them to do, you know, listening to what the Lord wants them to do. Um, Steve, we wanted to, we got to end it for this one. And, and uh, Steve's going to be with us for another program here. But we just wanted to give uh, you an opportunity to uh, plug your website, grace, uh, gracewalk.org. Uh, lots of uh, resources available there. Well, that's right. In fact, on the topic that we're discussing, you know, uh, I have the... Uh, the uh, weekly broadcast that I do on our homepage at gracewalk.org, I call it Sunday Preaching. And every week I put up a grace-based sermon right there on our homepage. And uh, people could just go there and click. I put it up uh, usually very, very late on Saturday night. And then I leave it up all week so they can go to gracewalk.org and watch that message every week. And I can't tell you how many people tell me that, that, uh, that they do watch uh, every single week. Uh, and there are plenty of other things on the website as well. Uh, of course, you guys, as we've already mentioned at the top of the show with Grace Walk uh, Internet Radio, uh, thank the Lord for Dave Lesniak and the good job he does managing Grace Walk Radio and all of our broadcasters. So you can go there to the site and click on the radio link and hear Grace Based teaching, you know, 24 hours a day on there. And a lot of articles and uh, just uh, there's a lot of 
uh, ways to get input through the website at gracewalk.org. So I certainly invite people to visit there. I'll, also, you mentioned Facebook. I'd invite anybody listening to uh, befriend me on Facebook. Like you, I've connected and and uh, met and uh, interacted with a lot of people through Facebook. So that's another good way to connect with each other. Excellent. Well, thank you, Steve. It's been good having you here with us. We've thoroughly enjoyed this and look forward to chatting with you again next time. All right. Thanks, guys. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard weekly on Gracewalk Internet Radio and other online sources around the world. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.